Hi. Uh, just get started. So I'm Derek. This is Diego. We both work at Pivotal. I'm a software engineer. Diego is an engineer lead at Pivotal. And we're here today to talk about pipelines and how you should write your pipelines, or at least how you should try to. So our agenda for today is we'll do a brief introduction on continuous integration and continuous delivery. And we'll talk about some things you need to have before you, you start to do this thing at home. Uh, we'll do the look at very brief description of what Concourse is. If you don't know what Concourse is, this is going to be not, not going to be enough. But just to remind us a little bit of like a few concepts. And then we're going to jump straight into some demo. Uh, we'll be writing some pipeline here today. We'll do a recap of the principles that we talked about when we are doing the, the demo. And then we open for questions. Cool. So just to define the terms, we'll, we'll talk about it today. Uh, we talk a lot, a lot about continuous integration. And then continuous in integration for us, when we talk about it, we are talking about the practice of building and testing your application in every commit. So every time someone pushes a code to your repository, something will happen in your pipelines. And CD, uh, or continuous delivery, is, is an extension of that. So it enables your team to release your software quick, quicker in a more sustainable and automated way. To some extent, the goal of both CI and CD is to making, like, releasing software boring. Because in this case, boring is good. You, do, you don't want surprises when you're pushing code to production. You want it to just be, go like, smoothly in a reliable process. Cool. So what do you need before you start doing CD, CI and CD in your organization? Is you need to have an automated, or at least an automatable build. So you need to be able to, from the command line, to run your builds and compile your binaries and then deploy your software. You also need some version control, especially if you plan to use concourse or anything like that. And more important, you also need your team to buy in. Uh, CI and CD are, not, are tools for delivering software. Uh, if your team don't want to do it, so there's no point in trying. All right. Why concourse? Uh, we, we choose concourse to be our tool for continuous integration and continuous delivery because it, has, it treats your pipeline as a first-class resource. So your, the pipeline configuration itself is a YAML file that you can commit and push to your version control. It also gives you reproducible and debuggable builds. Uh, each concourse run will run in an isolated container. And given the same set of inputs, it will produce the same set of outputs in general. Uh, <laughs> it's also extensible. So, but you don't extend it to like plugins or some like configuration in your UI. You extend it through custom resources. And in a nutshell, this is how a concourse pipeline looks like. This is a really simple one. On the left, we have the input resources. Resources are the things that your pipeline use that come from the outside, the outside world. The green box is a job. A job contains a set of tasks. And each task will consume these inputs, and then it may or may not produce an output. So you can see on the right side, the binary is the output of the build, of the build job. So just a disclaimer for those that are already familiar with Concourse. In this talk, we are assuming that uh, there are people in the room not familiar with Concourse. So we'll be like sometimes explaining some context, like giving some context and explaining what Concourse um, abstractions are. So just a disclaimer as we go. Yeah. Uh, and that's all we had for slides. So we're going to jump straight into some YAML. Uh, this can cause anxiety in some people. But Stay firm. Uh, the pipeline we'll be building will have four jobs. Build, deploy to staging, test, and release. Release to production. And Diego will be facilitating it. So, Cool. So as Eric mentioned, um, we are going to go the pipeline. And the, the goal of this pipeline is going to give examples to exemplify six best practices of continuous delivery, right? So we are going to code this pipeline, and we are going to call out the um, best practices as we go. So this is our uh, YAML file. Um, I'm sure that you love YAML, all of you in the room. Very excited about YAML. So um, we are going to create a concourse pipeline, right? So concourse, um, all, the, um, all the pipeline information is in a YAML file. And uh, that YAML file is nice because like, you can commit, you can push that to Git, right? So you can keep all your configuration from your um, pipeline. So what we have in here, we have a resource. Um, 
it's already in here because like, there is no point in typing this. Uh, we are just like consuming this project from uh, Git. It's um, the um, Spring Pad Clinic, so it's a um, project that's um, already there, so you can just use that. And we, we have already a container here. So this container is not like a concourse um, notion, like a property here. It's just here because like, we're going to use that. So first thing, um, we are going to create a job to get started, right? So uh, in concourse, we can do this uh, by creating a job that we are going to call build. And uh, that's it, right? That's um, how we get started. So let's try to set up this job now. Um, Want to explain the fly command line, why I, I typed this? Yeah, uh, you interact with concourse through the command line. Uh, you, you cannot like upload your pipeline using the UI. So for some reason, Concourse decided that everything will have like airplane-related names. So fly is the CLI. Uh, yeah, this set pipeline command sets the pipeline dash l loads uh, variables from a file. So in this case, we will be loading the secrets. Dash p is the pipeline name, and the rest is the configuration of the pipeline. I hope you can all see my screen. So I'm going to fire this, and uh, there you go. So what's happened is that like our command line is talking to a Concourse server that we have uh, deployed somewhere. And um, so we are creating a pipeline. So nothing exists. And uh, what this uh, CLI is saying, well, since we are creating this pipeline, this is the diff between what we already have and what we are creating. So here we are just creating a, a new job. So there is an error here. Just get, just get the resource. Yeah, we need to get the resource in here. As there you go. All live coding, we already made an error. So that's going to happen a lot. Right. So what we are doing here now, we are saying, well, there is this job, and we want this uh, job to consume this repo, right? So this is the only um, thing we are doing right now. We are just uh, instructing Concourse to doing that. So let's try that again. There you go. So we created our pipeline. Let me go back here. I might have the pipeline. Let me put this in here. There you go. Hopefully you can uh, still see my screen. This is the pipeline we just created. It's called CF Summit. And there you go. This is just like a build called job with a um, GitHub uh, resource reading code from GitHub, right? Uh, when we create a pipeline, the pipeline is posed um, by default. That's um, the way Concourse works. So we need to unpose that. Um, there we go. So right, so we are going to introduce our first best practice now. And our first best practice is, well, every time I push a change to my pipeline, I want this change, this change to be propagated, right? And that's not happening right now here. Um, I don't know if, uh, are there people familiar with Concourse uh, that can tell me why that's not happening yet? Just looking at the pipeline. It's not triggering, right? That's correct. So we are going to, um, I'm going to set up this again because we created some files to just to um, make life easier for us. Um, and uh, this is the task. Sorry, this is the task. Yes, cool. So now, if I go back to my code, so I'm going to jump some files in here uh, just to avoid doing some typing. There you go. So we stopped here. And uh, I just added a new task, and this new task is just going to compile the uh, uh, Spring Patty Clinic code. And um, that's the only thing it's doing. So if we go back in here, um, we can uh, maybe trigger this build. I'm not going to do this right now, because we are going to implement our first best practice and our first best practice uh, just to make sure that we are triggering the build, right? So there you go. We are triggering the build now. I'm going to set this pipeline again with uh, my uh, new file. And this is the only change um, we have right now. All right, so let's apply this change. Let's go back here. And I am expecting this build to be triggered automatically, because it's the first time I'm setting this pipeline. And there you go. So since this build was never triggered before, and uh, this uh, resource is triggering this build, um, the build is running now. So it's just um, compiling some Java code now and generating a package. Uh, right. So now that we um, are compiling this code and building this code, we are going to deploy this code somewhere, right? And um, we are going to jump to our uh, second best practice, which is, well, we need to deploy this code in a, another environment, which is not production yet, because maybe we are not ready to production right now. But um, we want this environment to be as close as possible from production, right? 
And that's the second best practice. And why is that? Well, to avoid some problems of, well, I'm deploying my staging environment, I'm using a MySQL database, but in production I have an Oracle database, and then when I deploy to production, things go wrong, right? Or I'm compiling things in a different OS, so I test this uh, binary, and then when I deploy that binary to another environment, to the production environment, well, uh, there are some libraries missing or some stuff can go wrong, right? Um, another example could be, well, an OS, right? Let's say that um, in staging I'm using, I don't know, uh, Linux, and then I'm going to deploy into production using Windows. Um, that's not like every time possible, but we should like try to do that as much as possible, right? Keep all the environments as close as, pos as possible from production. Right. Just for you not familiar with Maven, we are not skipping unit tests. Uh, the package command that you're using to build also run the unit tests. So. All right. So. Um, we are conscious of time, so I'm not going to type uh, the second job. So here uh, we have a second job ready. I'm just going to explain that to you, and I, we just set the pipeline. So what the second job is doing, the second job is uh, reading uh, the code. The second job uh, has a task inside, and this task is going to compile the code, the same thing the first job is doing. But once we have the binary, we are going to deploy this code to staging, right? And in this case, we are using PWs, we are using Cloud Foundry, and we are just going to push that to uh, Cloud Foundry. The uh, bit where we want our staging environment to be as close as possible from production, um, it's uh, somehow guaranteed by Cloud Foundry in this case, right? Because we are deploying to the same Cloud Foundry deployment, and things tend to be the same. Um, right, so let's uh, try to set this pipeline here. There you go, we have some changes here. We added a new job called deploy, and then this job has uh, two tasks, the package one and the deploy to staging. There you go. It's there. Let's go back to our pipeline. I can go back in here. There you go. We have two jobs now, right? Right. So. There is something still wrong with this pipeline, or at least not ideal, right? And uh, we are going to introduce our third best practice. Um, uh, and to do that, we are going to edit another file. So what we want to uh, call out here is that we want um, this job here deploy to fail if the build job does not go well, right? So let's imagine that. Um, in this job build, we are building something, the tests uh, have failed, and then we are going to deploy a build with broken tests, right? So we want to have a sequence, a linear uh, sequence of steps here in order to guarantee that what we are deploying is actually, has actually been tested. Um, so let's go back in here. I will try to set this pipeline here. This is our, um, this should be the same, cool, cool stuff. So. How to do that? Well, if we go to our deploy job, we are consuming this uh, source code thing here, right? And uh, when we come back to uh, the pipeline, both jobs are consuming that. I would like the deploy job to consume the source code that was uh, uh, used, or the same commit shot that was used to build the code, right? So the only thing that we need to do here is to um, use this um, past uh, property from concourse and say, well, this resource here is coming from build, right? So I'm going to set the pipeline again. And the only div should be the line I just added. There you go. If we go back in here, if I refresh, there you go. We introduce our th um, third best practice. Right. So that, that means that if it fails on the first job, we're not going to trigger the second job. Yeah. Cool. So moving along to introduce our fourth best practice, um, looking at this pipeline, we can see that in the build phase, we are compiling the uh, project, we are creating a package, we are creating a binary, and in the deployment uh, job, we are doing the same thing as well, right? So what we need to do here is to avoid like building the binary twi uh, more than once, like we can build many times, um, and that's because we want to make sure that the binary was, that was um, built by the uh, build job uh, is the same binary that's going to be deployed by the other jobs in the pipeline. 
So uh, let's do that change. So the goal will be to remove uh, this code here that's um, actually building the uh, binary. So we will need uh, this code here in the uh, task that we're using in the uh, build step, right? And now what we are doing here, we are well copying the jar that we are building into this directory here. This directory is going to be created by the, um, this output um, property in the task, right? Um, also, when we have inputs and outputs, um, the path uh, does not tend to work correctly, as far as I can tell from my experience. So we need to see the into this um, uh, source code here. This is where we are cloning our GitHub repo. We are compiling that, and we are copying that into this um, release jar. So now this job here is going to um, output this jar. The problem is that Concourse doesn't have the concept of sharing resources between jobs. So in order to achieve that, we need to move the result of the build, that is the jar, from the local container to an external place. And we're going to do that by just putting it into an S3 bucket. There you go. So as Derek mentioned, we have a uh, resource um, that we need to put in here. So we have uh, three, uh, three main properties in this job. And uh, we are going to create, hang on, there you go. We are going to put this uh, compiled jar here. And we need to pass some uh, params. And the param, I'm going to remove this line. And the param here is going to be the file that's going to be in release jar. There you go. Just removing some white space from here. Right, so what this job is doing, this job is compiling, uh, creating a binary, and uh, making this binary available inside this resource. And now we need to use this resource um, in the second job because we're going to deploy that, right? So let's uh, grab that compiled jar, um, and let's use that compiled jar has to build through, through. in here. Well, we don't need this one anymore, right? And there we go. Am I missing anything? I don't think so. I need to change the name. I need to change the name. There you go. And the name in the script as well. You can also like extract this and put it into an external file. You don't need to type all of your tasks configuration inside the pipeline. It's just simpler and requires less file movement. So that's why we're doing it. There you go. So if we look at the div, we are removing that package task in there. And we are creating some logic here in our first build job in order to export the compiled binary. And we are also using that compiled binary in our second one. So there we go. If we come back in here, we have two combined, uh, compiled jars. Let's go back to our conf. Let's try to spot what went wrong. We need to say, well, uh, this one is actually being passed by the uh, job build. Move the trigger to me. And we need to add the trigger as well. Good call. The left one. So as the build will actually build the jar, we don't need to trigger this job on source code changes anymore, but rather on new versions of my binary available in my bucket. There you go. So now this, this jar is being uh, compiled here. This job build is going to pass the uh, compiled uh, jar, so we, are, we make sure that we're not building the binary twice, right? So we implemented this um, best practice well. Um, so the next one is going to be to uh, add a smoke test to this deployment, right? This is our fifth best practice. Every time we are deploying to a new environment, we want to make sure that our deployment was successful, that everything went well, right? So in order to do that, we are going to um, add a uh, smoke test, what we call a smoke test, which can be like a very lightweight test, right? In our case, we are going to uh, perform a curl uh, call. So I'm going to reset the pipeline to the next one. I have some changes here, but um, these are some uh, small changes, just uh, not de dealing with uh, the paths and uh, directories. There you go, coming back here. I'm going to pick the, ne the next one. 
So this is what we've got so far. Uh, in our deploy job, we have this deploy to staging. And uh, as I mentioned, we want to add a task here that we're going to call smoke. I also like using verbs in tasks and jobs because like this uh, uh, specifies an action. So I'm going to do the same thing here. Um, I need to set the config. Actually, I need to specify a container I'm going to use here. It doesn't matter. I just need curl. So I'm going to use the previous one. And I'm just going to run curl here. So I'm going to use this uh, dash f uh, option because I want this uh, command to fail if I cannot like um, if I cannot call the URL. Thank you for the identification. That's pair programming, but <laughs> right. And now I need to specify the URL for my app. So that's gonna be. I don't remember the variable, so I need to check on my secrets because I have everything in here. So I need to use CF domain and the app name. Sorry? Yeah, we have an example here. I'm just going to copy this down. There you go. This is the right URL. Right. Getting rid of some spaces here. There you Let's go. Change from prod to staging. All right, this is a very, very basic smoke test. I hope you have a better suite of smoke tests. Right. Some identification problems here. It's the uh, joy of YAML, right? There you go. Going back to our pipeline, we can uh, trigger that once again. And hopefully our smoke test will run. Can trigger that from the beginning, actually. All right. Um, so the last principle we are going to talk about is uh, deployment to uh, production. and. Um, when we deploy to production on or to other environments, we, we want to do it uh, using the same scripts, right? The same way. Sometimes we have different scripts and different tools and different procedures to deploy like to environments that are not production, and then we use other stuff to deploy to production, right? So this is also a source of uh, problems when, we, uh, when it comes to pipelines. So we are going to use the same script. Um, in this case here, uh, just to make things simpler, we are going to use the same script, but the script we are using is uh, actually these lines of code here, right? This is an example in a more like elaborate uh, project. We would have like may maybe several scripts. So the goal here um, is to use this, the same script to uh, deploy to various environments. And we just need to pass the variables, right? We just need to pass the configuration. The configuration is going to be different, but the scripts and the way is going to be the same, right? So. I am going to set the next version to 6. Uh, some change in the naming, that's fine. There you go. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to copy everything here, because I'm lazy. And I'm going to call this one release, right? So we are creating a new job, and this job is called release. Best. Sorry? Yeah. Good spot. So this job is coming from deploy. This uh, source code is coming from deploy. This compile jar is also coming from deploy. So I'm sure that I'm passing all my artifacts through the pipeline. The question was, why do you need source code as an input? We don't. <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, we decided to skip one important test, one important job on this presentation because of the time. That is the test. So between actually pushing to staging, you need to run some acceptance tests in your staging environment, like to test the load and test things like that. And in this particular case, the test suite is on the source code. That's why we, we were passing it through, but yeah, for this example, we don't need it. There you go. 
So I just added the um, release job. I'm going to set my pipeline. I'm going to get back here. And then now we have the release. And if we come back to Vim, we are using the same script. Now it's hard-coded in the pipeline. This is an example. But it, this would be a script outside in some uh, GitHub repo. Um, and the things that are different here are the CF space, for example, and the app name. Yeah. So we just changed the configuration instead of how we deploy. Yeah, now you're deploying to production. Hopefully that will go through. Um, what else are we missing? That's it. All right, so we got through it. I don't know how much time we have, if we can show the example of the uh, tests. Mm -hmm. so right. Nice. Let me just set the uh, final pipeline so you can see the example. The, you show uh, the one that's already set. We have a run one that is already set, yes. Or not. Not, not in anymore. this space. That's fine. <laughs> I'm going to set a new one. Right. Oh, we don't have a new one here. No, we don't have that one with the um, test. Actually, in the, uh, in the full pipeline we have for this example, we have another box between deploy and release. And that box is uh, just running acceptance tests, right? Performance tests, other tests that we have. So all the tests that are running side build are sort of a unit test tests that are related to the code, so not black box tests. And in the tests that we would have between deploy and release would be black box tests, right? So these tests would be using an environment, maybe the staging environment uh, we are using to deploy. Um, we are using the uh, deploy job. So maybe we should come back to the presentation. There you go. All right. So just to recap the things we saw really quickly today were uh, the chains are propagated through the pipeline immediately. That means you don't run your pipelines every week or every night or every couple of hours, but you run on every commit. And you do that on concourse by using the trigger true. Uh, Deploy into production-like environment. We can do that with CF. A little bit is a little bit easier, but I know that most of us have like more than one foundation. So make sure that you have a similar foundation at least. You also want to stop any failures, otherwise it's not even a pipeline. It's just a bunch of scripts that run in a schedule. You want to only build your binaries once because you want to ensure that all the pipeline is testing the exact same code and not that someone is compiling the binary somewhere with a different flag or a different config. And that's why it was passing. You want to run smoke tests in, in all of your deployments. Uh, one thing we may have missed is that we are also running smoke tests in our production environment. Production environment. It's exactly the same suite, which is a curl. But you also want to test all of your deployments. And if you can, deploy the same way to every environment. And that ensures you that you're not testing your deployment script when you are actually want to release your software, but you're testing it every day, or every time that someone checks in. And with that, we open for questions. Any questions? There is one here, one there. Maybe. Um, I guess it's, uh, it's just uh, out of uh, this talk, I would guess. Uh, normally, when you push, you um, maybe you don't want to trigger every time, because you may have a lot of pushes, and mm -hmm. uh, you want to uh, have some, some other branches, maybe. Um, so how, how usually it's organized? The so, uh, like development branches and then uh, the, the actual pipeline? So generally, we use trunk-based development. So we try to avoid branch as much as possible. And uh, all the commits are going to uh, the same branch, right? the same master branch. And then, yes, this can happen. Like We can have a lot of commits uh, in the day triggering the pipeline. right? But like if you look at your pipeline, there are some um, um, jobs that are uh, slower than the others. So at some point, if you have like fast tests and uh, if your build job is fast, even if your build job is going to be triggered first, like um, the, the build job is going to uh, trigger the other one. Let's uh, consider the other one is a bit slower. So at some point, all your commits uh, will get through until like normally the bottleneck on, on your pipeline. So like it's not like the pipeline is not going to run for the same commit um, like all the things. Maybe the second job uh, that's going to take a bit longer uh, is going to like run a batch of like five commits that you have in our first job. Does it work well when uh, there are a lot of developers working parallel on different features of the same uh, same application? Yeah, sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. 
Uh, <laughs> one thing you could do if you want to, to use branches is to set up multiple pipelines. But then as soon as you start to diverge, uh, you cannot guarantee that you're running the same things. Uh, and that's why we try not to do that. That's what, I, what we usually do is like try to use more lightweight tests. And uh, if like people are submitting pull requests, we like run these tests. And like this gives us a first glance of, OK, so we can try to merge these. And maybe we have like some more heavy tests. And like we try to merge and run them. OK, thank you. Um, when you. When you switch back to your pipeline, can you do that? What we normally have is kind of a user acceptance test in between what you call deploy and uh, production deploy. So you run a first bunch of tests on the platform in deploy. Then you say, OK, this is fine for someone to go over it manually and, and do user, ex uh, uh, how do you say, um, uh, user testing, yeah. manual testing. Um, and then at a certain point, you say, OK, this, this jar that we built before, this is fine for release. So how do you now trigger? the release stage with this uh, four-build jar that you take from some artifact store without going through the whole pipeline again? So yeah, it is possible to not trigger the release in here. So if you want to like, have manual tests at some point, like a point in here, you can have a box that is not triggered. And you can run that box with the version. So the way that concourse works, the resources will fly through your pipeline, and every job will run with the latest available version of that particular jar. If you want to control which one you have, you can use the resource page and then like maybe control it in here. Uh, but we can, we can talk about it, I think, after we are a little bit out of time. Yeah, so like in this example, very quickly, we're using S3 buckets to like store the binary and pass the binary. But like you can have other concourse resources that talk to like more elaborate rep repositories, right? And like these concourse resources will like keep a version, right? And like if you upload the binary, like the concourse resource will like keep a version, for example. And like that version, when it uh, goes to another job, the other job will say, okay, so I'm gonna ask this concor this uh, concourse resource to download this. Uh, uh, artifact from the uh, you know repository using this version, so this could be an example. Uh, the pipeline is it's available on this GitHub page, uh, and here are the resources we use for this talk. So give it a go. We um, we um, went for the branching approach and for our pipelines, and we usually have pull requests which have the same qualities as the master, so that you have the um, same test suite um, on a pull request so that you can ensure that the master won't break, because otherwise you can have a red master for a while because a com yep. commit brings a break, and you only re um, re realize it in staging, which takes one or two hours, and then other devs couldn't push yep. their code. Can you do that with Concurs as well? There is a GitHub pull request resource. I've used it with mixed success in the past. Uh, Concourse is not really ready to deal with branches and pull requests, but there is an effort from the community to make that a little bit easier. There is a resource. It's useful. Give it a go. My question is more regarding the branching. I have understood that you recommend to having one branches would be recommended, but how do you deal with the hot fixes if you have just a small um, cor uh, correction to be released to the customers, but the yeah. other piece of the uh, software is not yeah. uh, way, planned for the delivery. Yeah, the way we deal it with it at Pivotal, with some of our products, is we have when we release a version, we branch out, and then we leave a branch and a pipeline running from that branch. And then if you need a hotfix, you push to the branch, and that will push that and like run that pipeline from that branch, and then you can merge it back. Um. That means you are working more with the toggling process, right? Toggle releases has to be delivered, and the rest of that should be. Uh, is that safe? <laughs> is that safe? <laughs> <laughs> well, it depends what you um, want to do, but um, I think the uh, takeaway for me is like try to avoid branches as um, much as possible. So we also always try to do like some sort of trunk base. If that's not possible, we try to leverage like uh, pull requests and like plug uh, some steps from, from our pipeline into pull requests and try to avoid situations where like things can break down the road in the pipeline because like 
in our pipelines, at least in a, one of uh, our team's pipelines, more like the artifact goes through, more like the builds are going to take time because like, they're doing more elaborate things. So we try to, you know, like avoiding uh, having a bottleneck down the road. There are many ways to do that. Like, it depends on, you know, the limitations we have at hand. I think we're a bit out of time. So Derek and I, we are uh, available to have a chat with you. If you want to know more, if you have more questions, if you want to go deeper. Thank you very much. Thank you.